Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the math section of the T's exam. Um, I want to apologize for taking so long to make these videos, but I honestly, when I posted the first one, I didn't think anybody would watch it. I just made it to help people and I didn't think that anybody would actually watch them, but I'm glad that they're helpful and I hope that you guys learn from it and take from it and I really hope that you guys score really well. So today I'm going to be talking about the math section with you guys today. This section, I want you guys, if you struggle with math or you haven't taken math in a few years, like I just want you to take a deep breath and you'll be okay because this section is a lot easier than you might expect. Sometimes even taking practice problems, sometimes those practice ones are a lot harder than what's actually on the exam. And remember, I took this exam twice. So the first time I took it, I scored 100% on the math section. Second time I took it, I didn't score 100%. I think I scored like 94 on the math. But I know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to give you guys a list of topics that you're gonna, um, that are going to be very helpful for you for the exam. I'm going to teach you how to study for it. You'll be just fine, I promise you. So for this section, remember, if you watch my previous videos, I told you guys to buy this book. It is so helpful. But for the math section, honestly, I wouldn't say that this book was the most helpful for it. Just because sometimes I feel like this book, they load it with information that you don't necessarily need to know. Both times that I took, I took two different versions of the exam. There's a lot of crap in here that I'm like, what was the point of me going over that? Like, there, I wasn't even asked anything close to that. So this one is good for certain topics of the exam in the math section. It's good to like go over but it is not going to be your best source material, in my opinion. I personally think that if you use Brandon Craft on YouTube, he has a whole channel dedicated to just going over the math section of the T's. He is going to help you guys so much. It's what I used. I was on Facebook one day and somebody was like, use Brandon Craft and you will score 100 or you will score X and you'll be fine. And I was like, can, I, can one YouTube channel really help you? score like 100 yes it really can but honestly i used that book too but it's uh, whatever it's not that great so if you use brandon craft you will be more than okay to score a really decent score on it or even like 90s or even close to 100 he was very helpful i recommend him he will he goes over a lot of practice questions that are similar to the ones that are going to be an exam and again if you think about it in math there are certain topics, right? So it's gonna they're going to be asking you a question and it's essentially the same question, it's just different numbers. So if they're asking you a word problem that's going to be on the exam, all they essentially do is substitute for different numbers because there's only so many different ways that they could ask you about a problem that's the same topic. Does that make sense? So that's why Brandon Craft is helpful because he has a lot of questions on his YouTube channel, they're very similar and he teaches you how to solve them. He teaches you tips and tricks on certain questions and how to, he'll go over them. He'll, he'll tell you why it's right. I'm pretty sure he goes over why certain problems are like, certain answers are wrong. But anywho, write and craft on YouTube and you'll be perfect. On to the list of topics that I want you to know and understand so that you can score well. I'm going to go over it right now. If you can understand these topics and you study them, you will be more than okay. Can I help you on every single question? No, but can I help you in a good chunk? Of course. So you need to be able to understand how you need to be able to understand. Wait, what? Sorry. You need to be able to understand how to set up and solve for proportion questions. So proportion questions will be asked every single time. Sometimes they'll give you a word problem and the only way to solve it is for you to set up a proportion. So you need to be able to set up, set it up correctly and then you need to be able to solve it. If you can't set it up, then you won't be able to solve the problem. If you can't solve it correctly, you won't get the right answer. So you need to be able to set it up correctly and then you need to be able to solve it correctly. You need to also understand how to identify independent and dependent variables. 
some questions will be asked like in a word problem and then it'll tell you which one is the independent variable and then it'll be like, is it A, B, C, D or which one of these is the dependent variable. You need to be able to understand how to simplify expressions, um, practice different types of simplifying expressions, even expressions are in fraction form because that's kind of one that I got asked. It was asked in a fraction form and you need to be able to understand how to simplify it and then for mine personally, it was, I simplified it and it was still in a fraction form because I couldn't simplify it anymore. So you need to be able to understand how to simplify them and know when you can no longer simplify. And that'll be your answer. You need to be able to list numbers from least to greatest and greatest to least. For these questions, it'll give you uh, numbers like whole whole numbers, it'll give you fractions, it'll give you decimals, it'll give you percentages, and it'll be it'll tell you to list them from least to greatest. So you need to be able to either convert your percentages into decimals or your decimals into percentages or into fractions, whatever works for you, but you need to be able to list them from least to greatest or greatest to least. Okay, you'll get a lot of those, so make sure you know those. You need to be able to set up equations from a word problem. So it'll give you a word problem and all it's asking you is to set up an equation. So you don't have to solve for it. You just need to be able to take that word problem and set up your own equation. So again, just look up practice problems for those. You need to be able to multiply fractions. You need to be able to add fractions. You need to be able to subtract fractions. You need to be able to divide fractions. And I recommend searching up the bow tie method on YouTube. If you can understand the bow tie method, honestly, it's gonna solve you, it's gonna save you so much time on adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying fractions. I wish I would have learned this method a long time ago, but I literally just learned it for this exam and it changed my mind. It changed my mind. It changed my life. Bow tie method for fractions, adding, subtracting, dividing. You need to understand mean, median, and mode and how to solve for each one of those. You might get asked to solve for the mean. You might get asked to solve for the median. You might get asked to solve for the mode. You may get asked all three. You just don't know. You need to be able to turn decimals into percentages and percentages into decimals. You need to understand basic conversions like converting from milligrams to grams. You can look up... Um, a little cheat sheet on YouTube. It's an acronym. Is that what it is? Okay, anyways, it's King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. I'll say it again. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Type that in into YouTube and it'll explain to you what that means and how to use it for certain conversion um, problems. Trust me, you're going to need it. So please learn that. You need to be able to find the area and perimeters of different shapes. You don't know what shape they're going to ask you about. So you kind of have to memorize the area equation, perimeter equation for each. Like, is it a triangle? Is it a rectangle? Is it a square? You, you just don't know which one you're going to get. So just learn them all. You'll get a lot of word problems about money and interest charge. So... Just understand a lot of word problems surrounding money and interest. You need to be, you're going to be, they're going to ask you how to solve for a certain side of a triangle. So you need to understand the A squared plus B squared equals C squared equation. You need to be able to identify appropriate estimates. You need to be able to solve for X. You'll get a lot of questions telling you to solve for X. You need to be able to figure out what decimal or fraction has the greatest value. So they'll give you questions comparing a decimal and a fraction, and it'll tell you which one has the greatest value. Most of the time, just convert that fraction into a decimal and compare the two. Or if it's easier for you to convert the decimal into a fraction and then compare them, you could do that. You need to be able to memorize basic conversions like inches to feet, yards to inches, pounds to ounce, gallons to etc. Just Google YouTube T7 conversions and they'll give you a list of the conversions you should probably know for the exam. 
You need to be able to write expressions. Again, you need to know basic money word problems, like how much money do they have left at the end of the month if they spend X, Y, Z, but then they deposit this much money. How much money do they have at the end of the day? It's basically you're just adding and subtracting a whole bunch of money together. And then it'll ask you questions surrounding money about discounts. It'll ask, this is the original price. They have a discount of 20%. How much did they purchase it for? Or if they purchased it for this much, what is the, what was the discount that they received? They'll also ask you total cost questions about surrounding money. What is the total cost? They'll also ask you about tax and tip. You need to understand basic graphs. So you need to understand what a bimodal graph is. You need to understand what a uniform graph is. You need to understand what it means to be skewed to the right, skewed to the left. You also need to understand what a positive correlation is, what a negative correlation is. You need to understand what, what the circumference of a circle is and how to solve for it, and the circumference of a semicircle, even the area too. Ratio questions, you need to be able to solve ratio questions. Like they'll give you a word problem and they'll tell you what is the ratio of boys to girls. And you need to be, you need to be very clear of what if it says boys to girls, then you need to list a ratio of boys to girls. You also need to understand place values. What are the different place values of a decimal? Because it'll tell you round to the nearest tenth, round to the nearest hundredths. You need to be able to understand all that. And that is it, my friends. So hopefully you will list these topics, write them down, search them up, use Brandon Craft on YouTube, use other people on YouTube, and you'll be just fine. It's a lot easier than you think, so just take a deep breath and you'll be okay. I remember taking uh, the practice test on the T's website, the, the ATI bundle one, practice test A and practice test B. That math section was harder than the one on the actual exam, and I took that exam twice. So what I'm telling you, you'll be okay. Just study and you'll be fine. Anyways, I hope that helps. Good luck.